What your favorite exotic primary weapon says about you. Sweet business. You're a giant goofball, and all your friends know it but love you for it. You probably slapped on the sweet business one time as a joke and thought, oh man, this is gonna be hilarious. And not only was it, but it did way better than you were ever expecting it to. If you play PvP, you mainly stick to 6v6, and you quickly figured out most people have no idea how to challenge you, and when they run into your fully ramped up laser beam of bullets, it's funny each and every time. You're also more than likely a titan, and the other team can take your Actium War Rig when they've managed to pry it off your cold, lifeless corpse. Sturm. You like 120 RPM hand cannons, kinda sorta. You shopped around and tried a few, even some of the quote, better ones in the game. But you soon learned that none of them hit like Sturm. You're routinely surprised that more people don't use this gun. It's stickier than a peanut butter and honey sandwich, and other hand cannons just feel bad in comparison to you. When Igneous Hammer comes by in trials, you don't even blink an eye. Why waste all weekend sweating your nuts off when you have everything you need right here. Vigilance Wing. You know that one guy who only ever goes to the same restaurant, orders the same meal each and every time, and has been doing so for years? Yeah, that's you. You're an occasional PvP player on controller, and you're very aware of how few Vig Wingers are still out there in the wild, and you're kinda glad knowing that you're one of them. Sure, you're being stubborn as hell with your outdated dad rifle, but eh, why fix a 1.0 KD? Rat King. You're a little bit of a gremlin, and you take great pride in that fact. You started using Rat King just to screw around, but found out you actually really liked it. Oddly consistent, worked well at close range, and hey, free camo. Even though you've adapted to being a solo squeaker, so to speak, you will take any opportunity to beg your friends to also equip Rat King so you can make your gun even a tiny bit better. They never do, but you still ask. Mida Multi-Tool. Mida was power crept years ago in PvP, but you honestly couldn't really give a shit. It's still fun, and it actually serves a purpose. It's a flinching machine. I mean, it's definitely not the hands down best flinching weapon out there, there's a lot of contenders in that pool. But hey, it's an OG, like a Halo land champion, and deserves your respect, damn it. Either that or you're just Drewski. Crimson, you're a PvP player, a controller main, and probably over the age of 30. You know that all the big shot PvP streamers are keen on hand cannons and you don't want to be a non-hand cannon using scrub. Unfortunately, you find the kick on regular hand cannons annoying. So you tried out Crimson, loved it, and stuck with it. Deep down, you know it's not really a hand cannon, but hey, at least it's not an SMG. The Jade Rabbit. There's no nice way of saying this. You are boring. Dudes with stamp collections watch you play and think, Jesus, man, live a little. You probably really enjoy momentum control or trials on big, long maps, and you you grin from ear to ear every time you catch some poor hard scoping sniper off guard. There's a high chance you use either the Raging Lepus or J Gesture ornament, and nine times out of ten, you can be found in your natural habitat, the back of the map. The Huckleberry. You've always been an SMG lover, but honestly, you would have rather stuck your head in the oven than grind out an adept immortal in trials. Oh, sure, the number crunching nerds will tell you it's the better gun. They're right, by the way, but you do just fine with the Huck. And look at that weapon design, damn it. That's a gem. Gentleman's primary right there, and the thought of swapping out that old-fashioned beauty for a god roll, unending tempest makes you want to puke in your helmet. Besides, you say, this thing does great in PvE. What's that? Osteostriga is better? That sounds like a bunch of communist, hippie, vegan, leftist bullcrap to me. You just made those two words up. That's not a real gun. Get off my lawn and don't f with the huck. Suros Regime. Much like the Thorn mains out there, you've been kind of annoyed lately. Suros popularity kind of comes and goes like the tide, but you've been out here feeling the motion of the ocean ever since this bad boy dropped into D2. You've stuck with your precious exotic auto through thick and thin, and how dare these other people roll in like a bunch of fair weather fans only when the getting is good. Ah, well, you're an OG and you know it. One day you plan on writing Bungie a strongly worded letter asking why Suros Regime only has a chance to return health on a kill while Crimson has it guaranteed. Cerberus plus one. Hey, real quick, should the new cardboard hamster hospital be constructed on the east or west side of the Milkshake River? All these decisions have to go through you because you're the mayor of Crazy Town. It doesn't matter how many times your friends call you cuckoo because you've got your go-to mental PowerPoint presentation ready outlining how Cerberus is actually way better than most people think, which you deliver confidently while going negative in yet another game of zone control. People may not understand you, but look on the bright side. When there's a Titan bubble on the field, you sometimes kinda maybe get the job done. If you don't get killed in the process, that is. Wish Ender. You fall under one of two umbrellas. Umbrella number one, you're a PvE main who has become addicted to the sheer convenience of Wish Ender in GM content. And honestly, who could blame you? Or umbrella number two, you're the worst 
worst kind of trials player out there. Oh sure, Wishender's been giving legal wall hacks for years, but you know as well as anyone that the latest Bungie bow buff has made this thing freaky good, way better than it's been in years past, and by god if you're not gonna ride that salt train till the cows come home. You may be able to see through walls, but you know what you'll never see? A life filled with joy. Malfeasance. You're a rootin', tootin', lucky pants shootin', PvE playin' hunter. Doesn't matter what activity you're going into. Lost Sector, Strike, GM, Patrol, whatever. Nothing beats Lucky Pants' mouth. Uh, but this strike doesn't even have any taken in it. Hey, I don't remember asking you a damn thing there, City Slicker. We don't take kindly to those who don't take kindly to mouth. Your choice of weapon may not always be perfect, but it's always fun. If you're one of the four people out there who use mouth in PvP, just take a seat right over here. Why are you doing this to yourself? Things are gonna turn around in 2024, I'm sure of it. Ace of Spades, you're a PvP player and you would rather walk through Times Square naked than ever use an SMG over a hand cannon. Odds are you're an old school D2 vet and you fell in love with your beloved Ace right when that thing dropped. Oh sure, new exotics rolled out over the years and maybe you dabbled here and there. Try this, try that, but none of it compared to the feeling you get when you nail a Mori headshot kill. You're the video game version of the guy who married his high school sweetheart, but unlike a lot of other senior year engagements that crumbled after graduation, yours is, amazingly, still going strong years later. You're annoyed that Ace has been slightly watered down since first coming out, but you're secretly glad because deep down, you know those nerfs could have been way worse. The last word. If MALF users are the cowboys of PvE, y'all are without question the cowboys of PvP. And I'm as confident in saying that as I am confident that you've got a controller plugged in. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And yeah, you know SMGs are more consistent, but f that noise. You want to succeed in PvP without lowering yourself to that level. At least that's what you tell yourself. Unfortunately, the sad truth is that even though you hold yourself to a higher, at least I don't use SMGs, standard, most MK players don't care and probably hate you all the same. At the end of the day though, last word is still fun as hell, I respect the big iron on your hip, and tip my oversized cowboy hat to you, partner. Thorn. You're a PvP player, and while there's a good chance that Thorn became your favorite exotic recently, it's more likely that you've always loved the dark hand cannon, and you're something of an exotic hipster now. You're annoyed at all these bandwagon posers creeping out of the woodwork and claiming to like the gun you've been mocked for using for years. Part of you wishes that Bungie had never put out the exotic catalyst to begin with and created all these wannabes, but at the same time, you know you'd never make that wish. That catalyst really put your gun on the map and it's finally getting the recognition it's so long deserved. Outbreak perfected. You're a PvE player and you really don't care about whatever's optimal for DPS. I mean, it's changed so many times over the years. Why bother trying to keep up when you can just give the raid boss an STD? SIVA transmitted DPS, that is. Even if people don't join you in putting on Outbreak, whatever. The Nanites are still fun for big target damage and crowd control, and the gun looks sick. They're the ones missing out, not you. Lumina. Okay, real talk for a minute here. I'm kinda having fun roasting a lot of people's favorite exotics out there, but if you main Lumina, there's a good chance that you are a straight up G. A top tier PvE tryhard who knows their damage stacking numbers and brings this exotic to the party for the good of the team and the good of the one phase. Everybody talks about the div bitch, but you know what they never mention? The Lumina Chad. You unsung hero of the DPS phase, and I just want you to know that out here under the eyes of God and elitist data and whoever, I salute you. Or you use this gun in PvP, and if so, you're weird. Bad Juju. Good lord, there are so few of you out there right now, the insert endangered animal here population probably looks at y'all and feels good about their numbers. I don't want to break your heart or anything, but there are way, way more lethal PvE options out there, have been for a while, and I promise you'll still get your super pretty fast with the right build. You don't need the juge. And don't you even think about telling me that you use this thing in PvP, because I can't even begin to wrap my brain around the concept of being a bad juju PvP main. If you play MK, put on no time to explain. And if you play controller, put on peace of mind. No jokes. Seriously, do it. I'm doing you a favor. Monte Carlo. There's no beating around the bush here. You love auto rifles, and you love to stab things. The day Bungie added the Monte Monte Carlo exotic catalyst to the game was maybe the best day of your gaming life and you'll use any opportunity you can in PvE or PvP to use your precious little shank gun. You know you're not meta, but you like to have fun and damn it, I respect you for that. Go forth and make Roberto proud, you little stab happy maniac. Traveler's Chosen. You are a streamer and your name is True Vanguard. Hey buddy, thanks for watching my video. Please upload more whiskey reviews, by the way, and I still think that video of you 1v1ing the trash talker is peak 
Destiny content, even if his audio did not upload. Okay, anyway, love you, happy new year. Okay, bye. Hawkmoon, you're a fun-loving PvP player and a fan of the classics. Yeah, there's a lot of hand cannons out there and you probably swap back and forth between them every now and then for variety's sake, but nothing, nothing compares to the pure dopamine rush that floods your brain each and every time you manage to tag someone with a one-shot kill. You live for that moment, the anticipation before firing, the mild anxiety as you take aim and the bliss when the shot connects. You also, correctly, love the look and sound of this exotic and feel a strong personal connection to it. Hopefully, one day you find someone who looks at you the way that you look at Hawkmoon. No time to explain. You are a mouse and keyboard PvP player and one efficient laning son of a gun. To you, nothing feels better than getting that wonderful all crit two tap and you'll spend all game chasing that high. You'll always call it out to your fire team members when your little bullet buddy manages to get a kill and who could blame you? We're all so proud of them. They grow up so fast. You resent Bungie a little bit for nerfing your glorious rifle, but at the same time, yeah, you totally get why they did. Dead Man's Tale. A long, long time ago, this gun ran train on the meta so badly that some PC players just straight up moved to console. Then the gun got a big old nerf and everyone moved on, except for you. Something about the Yeehaw rifle called to you, felt right to you. The look of the gun, the feel of the gun, the sensation when you connect with a clean downtown headshot in PvP, sometimes from way up in the air where you spend a fair amount of your time. You're actually kind of happy the gun got nerfed. The bandwagoners moved on and now you actually have to aim to get a kill and damn do you love that fact. If I'm being completely honest, when I see you on the other team in trials with a solar warlock or a lion titan build, I lean forward in my gaming chair a little bit. Cryosthesia. You are a PvP troll extraordinaire. I mean, really, some people get a kick out of goofing around, but making other people rage is your manifesto, and you have an entire build constructed around abusing this little gun in PvP all day long. Maybe it's a throwing knife hunter build, maybe it's a disruption break grenade launcher build, doesn't matter. You've perfected the art of the cryo troll, and it's funny to you each and every time it works. Almost as funny as it's gonna be when you one day get denied trying to enter heaven. Osteostriga. Ad clear is your business, and business is good. Your crafted osteo level is probably a comically high number by now and you're proud of it. Bungie made a huge mistake giving you this gun because it's so damn strong and fun that you've borderline forgotten what using any other primary weapon in PvE feels like. You were worried about Bungie giving osteo a nerf and then when you found out it barely made a dent, you were relieved. But now you're worried again that Bungie may come back in 2024 to finish the job. Ah well, you may have to relearn how to aim one day, but it sure as hell ain't today. Touch of Malice. Well, you're a quirky little son of a gun, aren't you? You're a scout rifle fan, and the Malice had that fun, dark high vibe that you just couldn't resist. Activating and using the Blight Projectile is your favorite thing ever, and you love the undeniable unique factor of your beloved exotic. The gun ain't god tier, and you know it, but you love it all the same. Good for you. Quicksilver Storm. Oh, you poor, poor bastard. You've become addicted to Quicksilver in PvE, haven't you? Can't say I really blame you, but that's why you should always decline a dance with the devil. Hey, can anyone put on Divinity or Tractor Cannon for this run? Nope, that would interfere with your Quicksilver build, and Lord knows that ain't happening. If they want the debuff so bad, let them figure it out. You're too busy stringing up more bodies than a double-booked dominatrix in Las Vegas. I hope one day you find the strength to put the auto rifle down and learn to use something else, because Lord knows Bungie ain't gonna let Quicksilver keep being this good forever. Revision Zero. You work at Bungie because your name is Mercules. Hey buddy, how are you? Still rocking that godly tank top fashion, I hope? Not sure how you're hitting some of those jank ass snipes I keep seeing on Twitter, but then again, I didn't make the gun. Good on you, bud. Good on you. Final warning. You are a gimmick player through and through. Maybe you first picked up the gun when you saw a video on it from your favorite YouTuber. This gun is disgusting. Oh man, amazing god tier sidearm. It wasn't, it's not. And you figured that out on your own, but still found it pretty fun. You probably spend entire matches in PVP trying to pull off that get a lock on kill from around the corner move, and when it does happen, you pop off and laugh and high-five your fellow PvP troll bros, and then you return to gritting your teeth as you get mowed down by god roll SMG titans until the next round the corner kill you get 10 deaths later. If you main final warning in PvE, I'ma show you an image you might find upsetting. Sorry to do this to you, but it's for your own good. Exposure therapy. Don't look away! Vergless Curve. You are a big fan of build crafting and of bows, and when Vergless dropped into the game, you finally had the weird little tool needed to tie both your 
favorite things together. You love your build, and you love using Verglist to freeze and shatter and harass people in PvE as often as you can. You're a perfect example of when the subclass kit and the exotic come together to make a beautiful, stylish build. If they could, Bungie would proudly watch you with a smile, much like a father watching their kid riding their bike for the first time. Wicked Implement. I'm gonna be completely honest, I think you're a little bit boring. Hey, the Verglist curve people like Stasis too, but at least their weapon's kind of wacky. Wicked Implement just plinks away from downtown, only leaving the comfort of the back of the map when it's time to come down from your ivory tower and collect stasis shards. At the very least, you definitely march to the beat of your own drum, but man, spice it up a little every now and then, will ya? Necrochasm. You've got kind of a certain vibe. You know, uh, I'm really into Halloween type vibe, or uh, over half my wardrobe is all the color black type vibe. You may have a soft spot for this gun ever since D1, or maybe you're just a big lover of exploding things in D2. You probably don't play a ton of PvP, and that's fine. You have more fun in PvE anyway. Wishkeeper. You're a Strand fan, and for good reason. It's strong AF in PvE, and you absolutely love your build that near eliminates combat from the game by just stringing up every enemy in the damn room. You're fully aware that Quicksilver Storm is god tier, but you swapped over to the bow because you want to mix things up a little bit and try something new. And I mean, come on, just look at the damn thing. Fashion over function, and come on, that Riven backstory was so damn touching, you couldn't help yourself. Fighting Lion. Oh, you're just the absolute worst kind of person, and you know it. You play PvP, quick play and trials, maybe even comp, and you take great delight in trolling the absolute hell out of the other team with your primary ammo launcher. You probably have a particular build you fine-tuned over the years for maximum enemy annoyance. Every time someone sends you hate mail after you've broken their flawless card, you giggle with glee that this will be a fine addition to your collection, and you wouldn't have it any other way. Sunshot. You're kind of a meta slave, but at least you're a fun one. You're well aware that people think you're basic, but it's so hard to care when you're a walking firework factory generator. Solar builds are the bee's knees to you, and you're really happy anytime you get an opportunity to use yours in PvE. If you play PvP, you know what? I salute you, because odds are you're probably pretty good. Every time you outgun a 140 RPM hand cannon user in PvP, you smirk just a little bit to yourself. Graviton Lance. You're either Destiny the meme, or just another person who loves two things, good weapon design and filling the entire room with grape-flavored explosions when you play PvE. Void surge activities in particular make you a little extra giddy because you know exactly what you're bringing to the party. PvP users, yeah, you're out there for sure. You're not quite a meta slave, but you're not exactly a trailblazer either. Skyburner's Oath. You're a PvE player, and while some people can't stand the thought of being miles away from the action, that's your cup of tea. Put your feet up and hell, maybe even enjoy a tropical drink while you gun down enemies from another state. You really enjoy any activity that features Cabal, because then you don't have to justify to other people why you're rocking the Skyburner. You also think Skyburner is maybe the best sounding exotic in the game, and you're not far off. Risk Runner. Much like how Batman was scarred long ago by something that shaped what he would one day become, so too were you. Overly annoying arc damage is your own little version of watching mommy and daddy getting popped in an alley. And where young Brucey found salvation in giving purse snatchers concussions and refusing to go to therapy, so did you find salvation in Risk Runner. You slapped that puppy on and watched all that blue damage just bounce right off of you. You probably have a few builds where you self-trigger arc damage with a grenade and chain lightning the room. Yeah, your build is a tad old-fashioned, but if it works, it works. Hard light. In PvE, you consider yourself kind of a jack-of-all-trades player. You're ready to handle any type of surge and any type of shielded enemy. Your friends probably don't have the heart to tell you, though, that you can do so much better. Yeah, you're prepared for anything in the same way that a guy with a Swiss army knife is prepared for anything. Like, you can cut things, but good god man, get a real knife. Your weapon has invisible training wheels that you can't see. Go watch a few build videos, I promise that eventually you'll look back and view your hard light as sort of a blunder years type loadout situation. Polaris Lance. You're kind of a plain Jane, but you're efficient, I'll give you that. You know just how good the Lance is in a lot of PvE content right now, and you have a whole build put together that lets you punch through some activities like they're a wet paper bag. Your gun is the pad tie of exotics. There's other options out there, but you figure, eh, why stray from something you know you're in the mood for. Trinity Ghoul. If you're ever in a raid and everyone asks who wants to do what, Barry Allen himself wouldn't be able to say, I call ad clear as fast as you. I'd tease you, but honestly, truth be told, I get it, man. Just like the guy who can sit down and entertain himself by popping bubble wrap for an hour, so can you sit down in any PvE activity and plunk arrow after electrified arrow into wave after wave of red bar enemies and feel nothing but joy as they collectively get zapped into oblivion. Le Monarch. I would like to ask at this time that the few of you out there who main the monarch in PvE, please leave the room. Okay, we good? Great. You son of a bitch.
You know what you did. Being a monarch main in PvP is the D2 version of being a call center scammer. You make people pull their hair out 24 seven and somehow you still manage to sleep at night. You've probably gotten into a lot of arguments about how the gun really isn't that bad as everyone says, but deep down you laugh knowing full well, yeah, it totally is. After all, that's why you use it, but you'd sooner eat sand than admit it out loud. Teraba, there was a time when there were a lot of you in PvP. Thankfully that time is long gone. Through various bungee nerfing and general power creep, a lot of folks have moved on to other options, but you stuck around. You know your beloved exotic is kinda over the hill at this point, but you're still addicted to the thrill, the rush of the ravenous beast perk. When it works, it really works, I'll give you that. Do most people think you're kind of a chode still running around with peacekeepers and quick play? Yeah, probably, but you definitely don't care. Good for you. Symmetry. The line between serious and troll is so very thin, and you like to walk it every chance you get with this gun. Like the cryosthesia player, you live to have your weapon secondary feature get activated in PvP. But unlike them, your exotic is a bit more refined. Yeah, you giggle like a middle schooler drawing a dick on a desk when you get your disgusting auto track kill, but it's not quite full on degeneracy like other weapons out there. You're troll light. Same great taste at half the calories and insanity. Devil's ruin. The smart money says that the majority of y'all are trolling in PvP and I honestly can't say sh** because I laugh like a maniac when I laser people with this gun. You are relentlessly annoying and probably double or triple stack reloader mods on your gauntlet armor for minimum beam downtime and you're also frequently amazed at just how many people don't use or even know about the existence of this gun. You're more than likely going to hell but at least you'll be among good company when you get there. Tommy's Matchbook. Question, what do you get when you take someone who really wants to experience the joy of lighting things up with a solar build but doesn't want to seem like a complete meta slave? You get this, Tommy's Matchbook. Sure, it's not the best exotic out there, but it oozes personality and you happen to really like the ultra deep mag and the fact that the gun kinda encourages you to not aim and just lazily hip fire the whole time. It's right up your alley. And hey, what other gun is gonna make you feel like a space age 1920s gangster? Tiku's Divination. You're likely a PvE main and your goal is to make the room go boom under any circumstances. Oh, what's that? The activity we're about to play is a void surge, you say? I don't even know what the f that means. I'm about to make this room void enemies right here, if you know what I'm saying. If you use Tiku in PvP, you're delighted when you get a kill, but half the time people just peace out after getting primed and it secretly annoys you to no end. Ah, well, at least you don't use La Monarch, Vex Mythoclass. If you're a PvE player, your decision to main this weapon likely happened very recently, but whatever, you don't care. You'll gladly bring this into any activity that features any kind of champion and your teammates will give you a hearty thumbs up when you do, even though they might think you're a little bit boring. If you're a PvP player, there's a good chance you have the Reign of Fire exotic boots glued to your damn feet and only the icy grip of the Grim Reaper will manage to pull them off of you. Collective Obligation Each time Bungie gives a preview of the upcoming seasonal artifact mods, you say a small prayer to the gaming gods that you'll be given anything void related so you'll be able to pop off in PvE with your beloved obligation. Some people found this gun kind of complicated, but not you. You already loved using Void, but getting your hands on this gun made it that much better. Next time we get a new artifact preview, I'll sacrifice a single Ascendant Shard in hopes that you and your Void worshipping kind have a bountiful harvest. Trespasser. There's a 90% chance that you're a fan of this gun because you watched that one elitist Datto video where he said hashtag Trespasser gang rise up, you started using it for the meme, and it's part of who you are now. Kind of like the person who unironically wears a Hagao attire out in public. Probably did it as a joke at first, but you're in too deep now. May God have mercy on your quirky little soul. The Manticore. I'ma be honest, out of all the SMG users out there running around in PvP, you might be the only one I partially respect. Everybody else may be slobbing that meta knob, but you're not quite in the same camp, are you? Don't get all excited, you're not that much better than they are, but at least your loadout has a bit of personality. I'll give ups where they're due. The Manticore is fun, and better than most people give it credit for. I mean, I wouldn't sit at your cafeteria table at lunch, but I would give you a slight nod as I walked by. Hierarchy of needs. Either you use this bow because admittedly it is quite possibly the most badass looking exotic in the game, or you saw a YouTube video not too long ago from insert content creator here that highlighted how hierarchy is actually decent at certain Grandmaster Nightfalls and you got hooked on it for that reason alone. When you're going to do PvE activities with your buddies, you're always the guy who tries to casually mention how easy things would be if everyone used the bow with you, but they almost never do. Oh well, at least you look good while plinking from downtown. Centrifuge. Either you're a PvE main and damn, do you really like using Arc 
2.0 builds, or slightly more likely, you're a PvP player, probably on controller, and you know just exactly how consistent Centrifuge is in the right hands. Will it ever be god tier meta? Probably not, and you know it, but you giggle with delight anyway when you manage to outgun any meta users that wander your way as you perma sprint around the map. You also think that as far as exotics go, Centrifuge actually looks pretty badass, and you'd be right. Click the like button on today's video if you want me to do a follow up for special weapons and leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.